Hey, it's Liam Killen, and this video will have two parts. Part one will be about how to actually set up a bus in Logic Pro 10, and part two will look into how I use those buses creatively. If you're already familiar with how to set up a bus, I've left a timestamp in the description below, and make sure if you're on your way there to like and subscribe. I've been focusing a bunch on DAWless music hardware in recent videos, as in gear where you could start and finish your track without using your DAW. But that's almost never where the production of music ends, in my experience. In fact, a lot of the music that I've composed in my life has began and ended in my DAW. It's kind of like a mandatory step for me. Even the music that I compose DAWless, like maybe on the OP1 or the OPZ, I always go back to Logic Pro 10 to either mix it or add some sort of effects. It's just a step of the process. Great, so let's talk about buses. First off, what does a bus do? Buses are super useful and efficient for adding effects to multiple tracks at once. So for example, instead of adding a reverb plugin onto each of your tracks, you could route each of those tracks to the same reverb, which really cleans up your tracks and is a lot lighter on your computer's RAM. Here's a lead line from my latest release called Dashboard without any effects on it. Setting up a bus is the exact same for every track, so whether it's a track stack, or the tracks inside the track stack, or even another bus, it's always the same. And yes, it is possible to route one bus to another, to another, to another, but for now we'll just keep it simple. Let's set up a bus. So on the far left here, this is your track. Click on send, go down to bus, and then click an empty bus. So as you can see, I have a bunch set up already and I'll just click on bus 17. From there you click on audio effects on that bus and you can add any effect you want. So I'm gonna start with reverb. Ah uh, yes, one key part of using buses, head down to aux 19 here. That's the current name of the bus. Let's change that to lead synth reverb. Trust me, you wanna stay organized and name all of your buses. It'll save a lot of trouble. <laughs> Back to the reverb, make sure the mix knob is at 100% so that when you send the effects to that bus, you'll hear a difference. And then add your reverb. Now you can see that the bus is peaking a little bit, so I would actually lower the volume of that bus. Let's try it again. Yeah, that's something that I often do. I'll actually lower the volume of that bus so that the effect is a little bit more subtle. See, music production's pretty easy. Almost as easy as hitting that subscribe button. We have arrived at part two. Now that you know how to use a bus, I'm gonna show you a few creative ways that I use buses. Let's maneuver back to our bus. So head back to synth lead and click on bus 17 to get to the bus. It shows up there. And basically all we're gonna do is add more effects. We'll keep that reverb on top and we'll make this a little bit more interesting. Let's go back to the reverb. We're gonna turn the decay way up to maybe like 12 seconds. And then I'm gonna add this cool little waves plugin called one knob pumper. Seriously? Oh, come on, seriously? There we go. It's like the wheel of death. Visually, you got this pump going and you could choose the intensity of the pump. Okay, we'll add one more. We'll go to Sound Toys, Pan Man. So now we have a lead line that's gonna play straight down the middle, and then we have a pumping reverb that's also gonna pan side to side. Um... 
Two simple little plugins, and that adds so much motion and life to that reverb. Let's hear it with the rest of the track, actually. Yeah, that's a really awesome option to have. Let's get rid of these plugins for now. And we'll do one more just using Logic plugins. So I'll head to Reverb, Space Designer. Let's see what else we could find here. Maybe a filter, auto filter. Let's try that. Waves plugin that I was using before is kind of similar to what's called sidechain compression, so I'll show you what that is. Head down to dynamics, compressor, this little switch here, click sidechain, and then head up to sidechain up here, and let's choose kick for now. So now every time that kick hits, it's going to cut a hole into the reverb, which gives like a pumping sort of motion. super useful tool and I use it very often, especially with this kind of electronic music. If you want me to make a video on how I use sidechain compression, maybe just let me know in the comments and maybe hit the subscribe button while you're there. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, that about does it with the buses. A few other words of wisdom. <laughs> I would say be bold and try to combine effects that you normally wouldn't. If you're only using Logic stock plugins, you got plenty to work with. I really appreciate you guys being here, so thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna play you out on the live performance of the track we just worked on today, which of course is available on my SoundCloud. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and you guys are the best, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.